All right, welcome everyone to the final episode of this training segment of the Fundamental Series. Um, I just recently published uh, the last video on rest periods, so I'm gonna skip the full recap here. Um, if you missed any of the important stuff that I've talked about previously, I'd recommend checking out that rest periods video. I'll have it linked in the description below. And I go through like a quick, probably two minute summary of everything we've gotten to to date. But that brings me to the topic of this video, which is gonna be lifting tempo. So basically how fast do you lift weights up and bring them back down uh, if your goal is hypertrophy. And I think it's worth mentioning that this is all the way down here on the order of importance. So this is something that's less important than everything else over here. Uh, but I think it's worth noting that it does tie in quite nicely with the idea of safety and form which was the very single most important thing that we emphasized from the very beginning. Because if you aren't lifting with a controlled tempo, then I think you're that much more likely to injure yourself and not be getting the most out of the exercise. Um, so just a quick reiteration here of what we mean by proper form. For the most part, it comes down to good control and it comes down to full range of motion. So for the most part, you wanna say you're doing a chest press you want to be bringing the weight all the way down to your chest and then all the way out to full extension. And you also want to be controlling the weight, not just letting it fall under the force of gravity. You actually want to be resisting gravity on the way down. And I would say these are the two most important things. With that aside, I want to quickly highlight some literature on this. Uh, so in 2014, Schoenfeld, Ogborn, and Krieger performed a meta-analysis on a bunch of different studies that looked at different lifting tempos. And what they actually found, I'm gonna scoot over here, what they actually found was that from 0.5, so from a 0.5 second lifting tempo all the way up to an eight second lifting tempo, they actually saw similar to the statistical significance, the same hypertrophy across this wide spectrum of lifting tempos. This is the time of a single rep. So you could take eight seconds for a single rep. So that would be like a four second lowering phase and a four second concentric phase and see very similar hypertrophy to anything all the way down to somewhere in the middle, down to very fast reps. Um, so that tells us that there's actually um, a lot of room to be creative with your lifting tempo because there doesn't seem to be any definitive answer from the scientific literature other than the fact that they found that lifting tempos that were super slow, so tempos that lasted greater than 10 seconds were actually worse for hypertrophy. Um, so you see the people who you see there doing like the very exaggerated super slow negatives and super slow positives, now that actually does tend to be worse for hypertrophy. And it's probably because you just have to drop the weight back so much that you just can't get that same tensile stimulus as you would with more reasonable uh, tempos. Given that there's room to be creative and to be dynamic with tempos, uh, I like to vary it depending on the exercise and depending on what my specific training goal is. And we'll get into some specific, exam uh, specific examples down here. Um, but just in general, I actually like something of a normal lifting tempo. So before I get into that, I'm gonna explain what all this means actually. Uh, so this is lifting tempo notation and each number refers to a specific phase of the movement. Um, so let's just use this here. So we got two, zero, two, zero. The first number refers to the eccentric. So if we're doing a chest press, for example, say a dumbbell, dumbbell chest press, uh, the two here would refer to the two second lowering phase. So you take one count, two count, and then you'd be at the bottom. So this is the bottom of the range of motion here. So you wouldn't have any pause at the bottom. So you'd take two seconds down and then you'd immediately reverse the range of motion. This is your concentric or your positive. So you'd have two seconds on the way up and then this is at the top of the range. So you'd have no pause at the top. So this two zero two tempo in practice would look like this. You'd have a one, two, you wouldn't actually pause like that. So it would look more like this. Two seconds down, two seconds up, and it would be a fluid motion like this. Um, of course, once you get under load, it's not gonna look quite as smooth as that. And I would say in reality, my preferred general lifting tempo is something more like one second on the way down, one second on the way up. Um, but it can differ. Uh, you can allow for a little bit of a squeeze here at the top. So you might change that to like 0 0.5 
or you might really feel the stretch at the bottom, you could change that to 0.5. Uh, but again, I think that the main point here is that you've got good control both on the concentric and the eccentric, not just letting the weight fall under gravity. Now, because we can see the similar hypertrophy across a wide spectrum of different tempos, I think that depending on your specific goal or what you might be trying to train in that session, you can experiment with different types of tempo. Uh, so if you're trying to train power, which is explosive force, essentially, so if you're trying to get stronger, it's good to train uh, for power on some movements, uh, then you might want to use what's usually annotated as an X here in the positive lifting uh, section. And that basically means you're lifting on the concentric as fast as possible. So let's just use the squat here as an example and go with this one zero X two uh, lifting tempo notation. This would be a one second eccentric. You'd have no pause in the whole of your squat and then you would explode out of the bottom as quickly as possible and then allow for two seconds up at the top to get another breath in. And then you'd go down again, explode up as quickly as possible, another two seconds to get a breath in. And when I'm doing heavy squats, this is almost without exception, the lifting tempo that I use. Um, I find that some people try to slow down their eccentrics too much on the squat, and then that reduces the explosive power you can get on the positive. Some people will pause in the bottom of the squat, which can be good for training technique, but it's not very transferable to the sport of powerlifting. And again, it diminishes the amount of speed that you can get coming back on the way up. Um, so that's an example of how I would train power. You'd have your explosive, uh, explosive speed on the concentric being trained here. And then the same thing could go for bench. So let's just do another quick example. We'd have a one second negative. We'd pause for one second on the chest and we'd explode off the chest. And then we'd have one or two seconds up at the top to get your breath back in. Um, so that's a tempo you can use to train power. Enhanced eccentrics are something that I've been using quite a lot lately in my own programming. And I think that they might be a little bit ahead of where the scientific literature is because I think they do have conceptual merit. I just don't think the, their effects have necessarily shown up in the literature yet. Um, so approach this with some degree of, ske of skepticism, uh, but still, if nothing else, it's a, quite an enjoyable way to train. And I think there is, like I said, conceptual merit to it. Um, so let's just use the lat pull down here as an example. If we wanted to overload the eccentric portion of the movement, we would take three seconds on the way up. So going up is the negative in this case. Uh, so you'd take a three second eccentric, no pause at the top, a normal one second concentric, no pause at the bottom, and then another three seconds on the way up. And because you are stronger in the eccentric portion of the lift, I think that sometimes overloading that a little bit more by either using the assistance of, or, or I guess the extra resistance of a lifting partner or slowing down the, the eccentric is a, a good way to do that. Um, if we wanted to really train technique, uh, there's a few ways that we can do that. I alluded to one earlier, and that was you could pause in the bottom of the squat, which kind of forces you to stay upright and to it kind of eliminates any momentum that you'd get uh, out of the bottom. Um, but another way to train technique would be, again, to slow down the eccentric. So let's just say we're doing the squat here. You could do a three second eccentric, which might, might say really enforce in your brain to stay more upright if, let's say, you had an issue with leaning forward or what have you. Uh, then you'd have a zero second pause at the bottom and then you'd explode as quickly as possible and then another couple seconds to get your breath up at the top. Um, so I found that slow eccentrics on these compound movements can actually be helpful in the case of improving technique. Um, I would say in particular on the squat and the bench press, I uh, generally don't recommend slow eccentrics for the deadlift. And then finally, uh, we can use tempo to train metabolic stress. Uh, it's actually really controversial uh, as to whether metabolic stress is one of the main drivers of hypertrophy or determinants of hypertrophy. Uh, but still, I think that it does have some conceptual merit. And even though it's controversial in the field, uh, there's nothing wrong with getting a good pump. Um, so just as an example here for the calves, uh, if we were to use a 3-1-3-1 lifting tempo, uh, that would be a three second lowering phase, a one second pause at the bottom, which I think you always want to do when training the calves. And then you have a three second concentric and then a one second squeeze up at the top. And so taken together, this is actually an eight second lifting tempo. So something like this would be about as slow as I'd ever really recommend anyone going. Uh, because like I said, as you go above that eight second 
rep duration mark. Uh, you tend to see detriments in hypertrophy. So uh, that's my whole spiel on tempo. Hopefully that was interesting with some of the specific examples. Um, but in general, I think that for most of your lifts, it actually doesn't need to be nearly this complicated. Uh, again, we're talking about something that isn't all that highly ranked on the order of priority, uh, but it can certainly make training a little bit more interesting and a little bit more specific. All else considered, I would say uh, a 1010 lifting tempo or a 2020 is probably what I'm going with most of the time, with the main criteria being that you are training through a full range of motion and you've got good control, uh, especially on the eccentric. So that's going to conclude the whole fundamental series. Um, I'll have the full playlist linked down below. Um, I think that this is part six now. Um, so if you haven't seen any of the other parts, uh, make sure you go check them out. Um, also, uh, my fundamentals hypertrophy program, where I take all of this stuff and put it into a discrete program that you can take and go through in the gym uh, is available on my website if you'd like to check that out i'll put a button to that over here um, thank you guys so much for watching and following along with the series i do like to just get out the whiteboard and kind of just rant sometimes uh, so thank you for your patience with me and i will see you guys all here in the next part where we're going to talk about nutrition um, so i'll see you guys all then